tell you something, I'm glad you can make it today. Let me tell you something, this is absolutely impressive that anybody can make it out on a day like this because uh, this is a, a special day and for you to be out here and make this sacrifice as you have is absolutely unreal. I'm Kenny Fogel, I'll be your MC today and we'll get on with the show and we appreciate you being here. As we get started today, we normally have the mayor do the welcoming, but the mayor's doing something else today. So the welcoming to Nelson County in Bardstown will be the member of the Post 167. He's also a city council member, ladies and gentlemen, Councilman Roland Williams. <laughs> It is indeed a pleasure for me to be here this morning for our Memorial Day program. On behalf of the city of Barstown, I welcome you to this annual Memorial Day observance. To Frank Thompson, Richard Ness, and Greg Spoony Rogers, who are the commanders of Post 42, 121, and 167 respectively, and to Donald Kroon, who is representing Post 167, to our Army veteran Mayor John Royalty, our speaker of the hour, and to my Air Force comrade, Kenny Fogel, our master of ceremonies, and all of you in attendance, I say good morning. We have gathered here this morning to show our appreciation to those comrades who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our country. These men and women need to know that our city, our county, our state and our country appreciate their services for the cause of freedom and democracy. They put themselves in harm's way so that you and I can enjoy the freedom and democracy that we enjoy. We put ourselves, uh, uh, excuse me, our heartfelt gratitude goes out to all of these uh, individuals who have served, uh, who have served our country or who are currently serving our country. Let us also remember all the POWs and the MIAs still unaccounted for in the wars and conflicts. Thanks again for allowing me to participate in this program. I wish God's blessings on each and every one of you. Thank you. And as always, he mentioned the word God in the sentence, and God is a big part of this as well. And to give our spiritual message today, we've got a doctor from the VA administration, also a member of Post 121 here in Bardstown, Father Ben Brown. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I've already seen at least two sailors, including Petty Officer Lydian, who is probably critiquing me for not having the proper cover with my dress uniform. However, I am very proud to be wearing the American Legion cover. And later on, I'll have that proper cover on. I wasn't trying to raise it, I was just nervous. But I think you've helped me with my nervousness now. He's been the... Okay, these folks are standing in the rain, so don't interrupt anymore, that is an order. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say to you that the Adjutant General, Major General Tanini, is hosting an event in Frankfurt at 2 o'clock today where they're <clears throat> cutting the ribbon on a new monument to fallen National Guardians of the Kentucky Air and Army National Guard. And uh, so I'm hoping to join him for that today. But I want to get right to this spiritual message. It's going to seem a little bit maybe out of place, but with the rain, I think it's going to fit right in. Folks, I want to tell you about baptizing service members in combat. It's a quick little story. About the time that I was serving in Iraq, 2004 to 2005. And when I get before the Almighty, I'm going to ask him this question. Why is it that you enabled me to baptize 11 and bury 11? Because that's exactly what happened. We had, in my unit, 11 KIA, and I remember them today. But it's a profound irony, I think, that I also baptized 11 who came back home with us. 
went on to live their Christian lives that they <coughs> committed themselves to in the midst of combat. And I think you might find kind of interesting the way I would do it. It wasn't very elaborate. Those soldiers, sailors, marines, airmen would stand in their combat uniform, flak jacket, Kevlar, what those of you of an earlier generation would call your steel pot. <clears throat> and we'd pray, then I'd have them remove that Kevlar, hold it down in front of themselves. I would take their canteen, bless the water, and pour it over their heads and collect it in their Kevlar. And that's how they were baptized. That was our combat ritual. But before I did that, I sang this little song that you might recognize from the Garth Brooks collection. You know a dream is like a river, ever changing as it flows, and the dreamer's like a vessel that must follow where it goes, trying to learn from what's behind you, never knowing what's in store, Makes each day a constant battle just to stay between the shores. I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry like a bird upon the wind. These waters are my sky and I'll never reach my destination. If I never try, yes, I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry. Too many times we stand aside and let the waters slip away till what we've put off till tomorrow has now become today. So don't you stand upon the shoreline. Say you're satisfied. Choose to chance the rapids and dare to dance the tides. I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry like a bird upon the wind these waters are my sky i'll never reach my destination if i never try yes i will sail my vessel till the river runs dry there's bound to be rough waters and i know i'll take some falls but with the good lord as my captain I can make it through them all. I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry like a bird upon the wind. These waters are my sky and I'll never reach my destination. If I never try, yes, I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry. I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry. Now, thank you. I hope you caught the little line that goes, you've got to choose to chance the rapids and dare to dance the tides. The people that we memorialize today did that. All gave some, some gave all. But it was because they made that commitment to take the chance, to choose to chance the rapids, to dare to dance the tides. And the way we best keep their memory alive is to continue to do that in our own lives. God bless you all. Happy holidays. Very good. Well, Father, you better keep sailing that vessel because we're not running dry yet. So we'll just keep on. So, Right now, I've got our keynote speaker today, and he's no, uh, really doesn't need any introduction today, but I'm going to do you a real short one anyway, because he's been a public servant for many years in Barchtown and around. As he uh, first served his country in the United States Army, and after graduating from Eastern Kentucky University, came back home to Barchtown to serve as a police officer. Served over 12 years as a city councilman, and last November was elected as the mayor of the most beautiful city in America. Please welcome to the stand the Honorable Mayor of Barchtown, Mr. John Royalty. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't mind the rain. That's God shedding his tears for every fallen soldier that we have today. 
So now I want to uh, I want to welcome you to our Memorial Day ceremony and thanks to all those attending. It's a privilege to be asked to speak to you today. It is a very important occasion. We are here to honor our servicemen and women who have fought for our country and to remember their sacrifices they've made for our freedom. We are especially here to honor those who paid the ultimate price by giving their lives in the service of their country. These are our heroes. We need to remember their achievements, their courage, their dedication. And we need to continue to say thank you for your bravery and your unselfishness. To quote a president, Ronald Reagan, all above, excuse me, above all, we must realize that no arsenal or weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as if the will and the moral courage of free men and women. End of quote. Thinking of the heroes who join us today and those who are here in spirit, as a person I can't feel but humble. We stand in the midst of patriots, family, and friends of those who have nobly served. Our service men and women come from all walks of life, but their sacrifice certain qualities that set them apart from everyone else. They possess the bravery, the courage, the pride, and the selflessness, determination, integrity, and dedication to their duty. These are qualities that, that allow them to serve a cause larger than themselves. Millions of Americans have fought and died on the battlefields here and abroad to attend our freedoms, to defend our freedoms, and, to, and also to defend our way of life. Even today, our troops continue to make those ultimate sacrifices. We see that every day. There are several different versions of how the Memorial Day came to be. One story is that after the Civil War, grieving families of deceased soldiers began to decorate the graves of their loved ones with flowers and wreaths. Southerners decorated the graves of both Union and Confederate soldiers out of respect for the families of the Union soldiers and with the hope that someone would do the same for their lost soldiers in the North. This informal practice led to the, to the formal Memorial Day observance in Waterloo, New York on May 5th, <coughs> 9, uh, 1866. Congress officially recognized Memorial Day as a federal holiday in 1887. Since then, each year we've continued to pay tribute to our soul to our show to our soldiers though we have a, awarded medals to many soldiers added their names to monuments and named buildings after them to honor them for their bravery nothing can ever replace the hole that is left behind by a fallen service member nor the number of medals or ribbons can comfort the loved ones he's left behind I would ask all of the service members and veterans here today to please stand. I think everyone's pretty much standing. <laughs> but I want to personally say thank you for answering the call of duty. It takes a special person to do that. You have made our armed forces the most respected in the world, and I want to say thank you again for, for your service. Thanks, you may be seated. Now I'd like for the family members of any family member that is uh, of a service man or woman and I wanted and I we know that you have lived through difficult times and have often taken the heavy load to keep the home fires burning I want to say thank you for what you have done it takes a special person to sit home and take care of home while the soldiers do their thing in the, abroad so thank you again. Your presence here today is a tribute to those troops and their families. It is the way in which we can say that we remember, that we will never, never forget. And I want to thank you today for attending this ceremony. God bless you and your families. God bless our troops. 
And God bless America. God bless. Good man. Before we move into the next place, I just want to thank there's a few so people here today. I definitely want to thank. I think General Ice. I think I, I saw him in the crowd today for being here. Former former State Representative Jody Hayden and the County Judge Executive Dean Watts. I saw him here earlier, and as well as several City Council members, Bill Buckman, see Bobby Simpson. They see. Uh, well, obviously we've got a uh, Roland Williams here with us, and Keisha Copeland. So uh, she's here today as well. And I uh, also want to thank, uh, I think, Matthew Hyatt, our county attorney, was here today. And Teresa Click, a nurse from the VA hospital. And I think that's very nice. She come down and spend a rainy day in Bargetown with us. So before we move on now, I'd like to ask the commanders of the three units of Post 42, Commander Frank Thompson, Post 121, Commander Richard Ness, and Post 167, Commander, well, Greg Spooney Rogers not here right now, but Donald Kroom is here to take his place, to get the wreath behind us and bring it around and put it in front of the... Uh, podium here or present in front of the flag for our, um, remembrance of the fallen. Let's go around that way. And I ask the uh, chaplains of each unit, the John Newton of, uh, well, actually, uh, see, we've got Jim Guest of Post 42 to come forward and read the names of those that have passed away in the past year from his unit. Post 42 only had one uh, member lost in this calendar year, but even one was more than we wanted to lose. He used to be honored and remembered. That was Rush. C. Wicks, deceased in February. Dixie Smith representing Post 121. Leo W. Corbett, Gerald L. Farnsworth, Louis D. Brady, Edwin S. Hooper, Wallace Brown, Farian Walker, Lewis Brindley Jr., Ernest Metcalf, Owen Harmon, Donald Beeler, Gilbert Shane, Richard M. Greenwell, Harold Hicks, Kenny L. Downs, James B. Mudd, Harold W. Sneed. And John Newton of Post 167. Post 167 lost two Vietnam vets this year, James Cameron and Eddie Hill. Please be seated.
That's it. Please be seated. And I do want to thank those guys. They're from my old unit at the Kentucky Air National Guard out of Louisville. I want to thank them profusely for coming down here, standing in the rain and doing what they do the, the day in and day out. And this is probably not the last place they'll be today. So that's the Kentucky Air National Guard Color Guard. So I want to thank them. And I think the Star Spangled Banner sort of lightens us the rain up a little bit. So if I'd known that, I'd played that first. <laughs> So every year the American Legion sends a Russ will be having some roses that will be passing out here in a little bit that will be uh, provided by Walmart. They do that every year for us. We pass out to members of, of uh, people that have people that have fallen in their families over the past several years. And but one more uh, housekeeping note before we get done. We do have a lunch. We do this every year. We alternate between legions. This year the luncheon will be held at post 167. It's out on Louisville Road. If anybody needs directions, we'll give them the uh, afterwards. But 167, they always have a great luncheon and that's where uh, Commander Spoony Rogers is right now. He's out there cooking lunch for us all. So uh, if you want to go out and have lunch after we get done here, Spoony's out there waiting for us. So as we wrap up today, again, I want to thank everyone for coming here. I know this is a, it's, it is a sacrifice coming out in this, this type of weather, and but, uh, the, but the people we're honoring today made much more sacrifices, so uh, it, it doesn't really, really seem like that much. So as we close out, I'm going to ask Father Ben Brown to come back up, give our closing prayer, and uh, we'll finish up here today for Memorial Day 2015. Father Brown? Let us pray. God of all creation, we feel your presence in the rain, and yes, tears for the fallen. Just as the rain produces the beauty of our bluegrass commonwealth, <clears throat> and nourishes our gardens for the produce that we look forward to, the tears also bring forth from us remembrance and rededication and recommitment. Oh God, you have blessed our gathering today as we have expressed in word, in symbol, in ritual, these values that we hold so true, they are values that are of your own divine making. Continue then to bless us as we continue to remember and serve. You live and reign as our God, this day, always and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless Nelson County, Bartstown, and the United States of America. Good day, everybody.